Hello and welcome to DTV, your source for information for the Knox County Democratic Party. With Knox County's primary elections having wrapped up just recently, we're in full swing with the election season for Knox County. And one of those races is the county mayoral race, which is promising to be very interesting and is heating up quite nicely. And so today we have with us Linda Haney. And she is the Democratic candidate for the Knox County mayor position. Linda, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Great. For, thank you for coming on. So, Linda, tell us a little bit about why you chose to run for the Knox County mayor's position this year. Well, as a 25-year proud resident of Knox County, I've only heard one voice in our, in our county uh, government. And so I felt it was time for a new voice, a progressive voice, and I believe I'm that voice. And in 2018, it's time for women to lead. And so those are the reasons I decided to step up. Okay. So tell us a little bit about your personal history with politics and being involved in your community. Uh, what do you feel was your first introduction to civil service? Well, actually, I have a long history of, of being a blue collar worker. I, I was a beautician, a real estate agent. Uh, a, I also had my own small business. I worked with my husband's business. And then I was a union labor, retired from that, and I've worked with senior citizens. I've been involved in politics in uh, Knox County. Well, actually, I could go back as far as when I was in high school. Okay. I did campaign for, for uh, I remember being in the high school when uh, President Kennedy was assassinated. Hmm. I also campaigned for uh, Johnson. Uh, and when I married my husband, he was a diehard Democrat, and I was then too, and so I was always interested in politics. And when we moved here to Knox County, as soon as we could find a connection with the Knox County Democratic Party, we just dove in and started in as precinct chairs and then worked our way up. Okay, and which led you to which to, position? I was a precinct chair, district rep, uh, county, I was part, uh, party uh, chair, also vice chair twice, and I'm currently the vice chair of the Knox County Democratic Party, and okay. proud to be so. All right. So what are some of those, uh, I guess, uh, values that, that led you to uh, this along your path in, in politics and political involvement? Well, having worked with, you know, as a laborer and having been a person that has not, I don't have a college education. I don't think that's good or bad. I just chose to go a different path. Mm -hmm. But I can understand the everyday person. I can understand packing a lunchbox and going to work in the morning and being really tired and dirty when you went home with your steel toe boots and your Carhartt jacket on. So I understand what the average working person feels like. And I think I can also relate to people that are very educated, like yourself. Uh, I, felt com I feel comfortable with all all different kinds of people and so I think that I could relate well to every citizen of Knox County. Right. So you mentioned uh, some of those blue collar jobs, uh, jobs where you do come home uh, dirty, sweaty, <laughs> physically tired exactly. the, and mentally tired. Yes, at the end of yes, the day. yes. Uh, I, I, while I am currently a lawyer, I did grow up on a dairy farm oh, okay. and worked several uh, sort of uh, jobs, vocations where, where that was uh, part and parcel to it right. as well. So. Uh, I know a little bit about what you're talking about. What are some of those experiences that you've had, some of those personal uh, things with the, the nitty-gritty sort of job that uh, they, well, they tend to sing about in country songs, but You've never really live lived so until you've uh, poured 35 yards of concrete and had to take a come along and pull that down out of a truck and, mm -hmm. and uh, lay wire and carry scaffolding up to the carpenters so they can set it up up three or four flights at Bull Run. Uh, and then jump into a, a, a pick uh, container and have to separate all the things out of it and, and make sure the metal goes in one place and, the, and that. So you've never really lived until you've done that. So I always think people should always experience that. Um, a really hard labor job really makes you appreciate other jobs that you get. <laughs> so, uh, but I think it's good and I think I have that understanding that uh, uh, many people in Knox County uh, that's mm -hmm. the type of work they do. And I see them, like when I see a landscaper, I'm always very, very uh, kind and gentle to them because I know how hard they're working. Mm -hmm. uh, when I see somebody working in, in construction anywhere around the roads, I always try to take uh, extra special care because I know how hard their job is. Mm -hmm. But again, everybody that works, sits behind a desk, they have another hard job too. And I can relate to anybody in any any line of work. Right. So with with some of those jobs that, that you were mentioning, 
What are, the, what are some of the economic realities that you notice come along with that? Well, for me, I was a union laborer, and so I got equal pay for equal work as a woman. So, and I had benefits with that, and I was paid a living wage. So, that's what some, what everybody should get, and mm -hmm. that's would be my focus of jobs in Knox County. That everyone would have a living wage in in this county because we found uh, that rentals and affordable housing is a really difficult situation in Knox County. If you're not making 15 to 17 dollars an hour, it's going to be very difficult for you to, to find a place to live, to rent a place, to make a decision between rent and utilities and food even. So that would be what I would want to bring to Knox County moving this forward. Okay. So what do you, uh, what do you feel would be your budget priorities for Knox County uh, for revenues and expenditures, public education, behavioral health, uh, such as the urgent care center, which is a, a new and hot issue right now right, in Knox right. County, as well as just the standard things of road maintenance and, re maintenance and business expansion and job creation. Well, number one is education. If we don't provide a really quality education for every boy and girl in every zip code in Knox County, then we're not succeeding. So that brings you to good jobs. If you have educated people, you can provide the uh, better paying uh, jobs, uh, the people that can fulfill that. You can bring business to Knox County because a good education system will draw people to come in here and want to live. Affordable housing is another thing. My second priority is uh, infrastructure. If we don't have a properly maintained infrastructure like good bridges and roads, why would businesses or, or industry want to come here? We are the crossroads in the area and we're a great place to uh, work and have a business. But if your infrastructure is not in good shape, then you know, you're not going to be able to draw that. And the third thing is that, again, living wage jobs. If we provide the people, the educated uh, workforce, we can have living wage jobs. And that's only going to make us go forward. It's going to make us grow. We will bring people, more people here. We can encourage affordable housing. And we can have a very prosperous, progressive uh, community. Okay. So your opponent, Glenn Jacobs, uh, appears to claim that he can see no reason for uh, increasing any anything in the income and in the revenue for the county but those are some of the things that he claims that he wants to bring to the county as well uh, improving infrastructure improving education continuing to make knox county a great place to live and and, and raise a family but uh, what is do you think it's it's fair to to promise these things with also promising that there will be no increase in in county revenue you can't, you can't say that. If you're going to be honest with the citizens of Knox County, you can never take that off the table because the simple fact is if the citizens of Knox County want good education system, a improved infrastructure, and good paying jobs to come here, we may have to consider uh, a raise in the revenue. We only have two sources. We have property taxes and we have a uh, sales tax. Sales tax is pretty high already. We can't really go any further with that. So we have to consider that you can't ever take it off the table. Now, first of all, you'd want to look at the budget, make sure everything is proper in the budget. But the thing is, the conservatives have been in, in, in politics in Knox County for 25 years, mm -hmm. as far as I can remember back, is that I've lived here. Well, we're in debt. We're, our bond rating is still good and all that, but we're trying to cut things like Project Grad and, mm -hmm. and the um, uh, magnet schools and all those things. That's not that is just not feasible in my mind. So if you want those good things for Knox County, you are going to have to consider minimal raises if possible. You know, no one's going to come in and say, oh, I'm going to raise taxes. That's a foolish thing to say. But you'd have to look and you have to go to the citizens and of course the mayor has to go to the, uh, to the commission. And I'd have to work really closely with the commission and show them the reasoning why it would be the right way to go. And so I'm willing to do that, and I can work with them. I can work with all of them, and we could find a compromise to move Mo Knox County forward. Okay. So it's safe to say that you're going to look at the situation that faces you if you're, when you're elected right. Knox County Mayor, right, and and find the best way forward. Absolutely, and work with everybody. Uh, the school board you have to work very closely with. Uh, the commission you have to be close to the sheriff. Our teachers, our uh, first responders, are not being paid well enough. Everybody knows that. 
and everybody says they want to change that, but the only way you're going to change it is to find the revenue to do that. We should never have a teacher decide to take another offer, a good teacher, to go somewhere else because we're not paying them a good salary. They're the people that are teaching our children our future mm -hmm. and our first responders. I don't want them to work extra jobs. They're working 12-hour shifts. That's a long shift and to be paid where you have to go and work another job somewhere to support your family. That's not acceptable in a county like ours. It just right. really isn't. Okay. So with those priorities in mind, uh, what will be your first actions when becoming the mayor, mayor of Knox County? Uh, who will you want to reach out to uh, upon uh, first upon election? Well, first of all, I would want to meet with all the current people that are working in the county and tell them that we can work together, that I'm a person that wants to work with them. I would want to be totally transparent and have probably town halls in every section of the county to listen to the citizens and then bring together our, our community leaders and say to them, what is it we want to do? How do we want to move forward? Get all that information together. Get the people that I'll work closely with and talk about this and find a compromise. Not just talk about it, but find a compromise and move forward. It may be in small increments, but you're never going to progress if you don't make those first steps. And I don't think we've made those steps for 25 years. I've mm -hmm. been a resident for 25 years and I haven't seen those steps made. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about cutting things for education, and not raising the te teacher's salary. That's not an option in, in, in as if I were mayor. So you mentioned progress there. Uh, what is that to you? Is it sheerly economic? Uh, is it, are there other factors that tend to be overlooked in, in Knox County when we talk about the word progress? How do you see that? For me, the thing about Knox County is this. We're a crossroads. Everybody drives through Knox County. That's true. And often they don't ever stop. Mm -hmm. I would like to make Knox County a place where people want to stop, okay. where they want to come and take a look at us, that we have the best education system in the state, maybe even in the country. I know that's a big thing to jump towards, but I think we can work towards that. I want people to say, hey, I think I would like to be in Knox County. When I turn on the news, I hear about Chattanooga, I hear about Nashville, I hear about Memphis, but rarely do you hear about Knox County. And we're a great place to live. I wouldn't have stayed here 25 years if it wasn't a great place to live. We've made this our home. So I think if we make Knox County a destination, a place where people want to be, mm -hmm. I think that we can do that. And I think we're uh, working in conjunction with the city, of course, which you have to do. Uh, we can make Knox County a destination. Okay. Are there any particular things that you think that we do have going for us right now that we're doing right that you would amplify? Well, we do. The, the city has many things like the urban wilderness and uh, they're going to be doing this museum. Knox County has uh, wonderful places to go to, parks that are wonderful. Um, we have a lot of, of things, uh, programs here that work really well for the citizens. I think that it's a beautiful place to live mm -hmm. and that if we pinpoint that, that it would be a, a attraction for people to want to come here and live. We need to watch our expansion. We need to make sure that it's not overly um, expanded. Mm -hmm. It's done with a sensible expansion and so our infrastructure can support it. But I think that it, I, I wanted to live here. Mm -hmm. I could have gone back to where I came from, but I chose to be in Knox County and my husband and I believed that this was the place to live. Right. Uh, one of those things, one of those particular issues with that kind of growth that we we would like to see, uh, maintainable growth, would be affordable housing. Right. Any comments on how you would tackle I've been, that problem? I've been going to some different meetings in different uh, communities where they're kind of a, you know upset about housing that's being built that's going to be uh, like 175000 and up. Mm -hmm. Well, that's affordable housing for first-time buyers. Any, if you know the market right now, anything $250,000 and below is gone in a week or 10 days. Mm -hmm. So that's where our, we need to find housing. I've uh, spoken to some of the builders. I've been to some of their meetings. And they know that those are the houses that sell. But again, we have to, use, we have to be really careful how we expand um, and make sure that it doesn't overtax our infrastructure. Right. And I found out recently from the MPC that we don't have enough money to help expand that infrastructure. And that's another thing that I would like to try to remedy. Because if you need a road widened, they have X amount of dollars and they can't go any further than, than a, a few projects. So we'd have to work with the state and the federal government to, and, and the local uh, governments to, to try to expand and improve our infrastructure. Okay. Uh, I want to turn to your opponent.
for just a few minutes here. So you're past the you're past the primary. Right. Uh, the uh, Republican candidate for this mayoral election is going to be uh, Glenn Jacobs, right. who is a self-described libertarian, who's quite anti-government, uh, appears to question the validity and worth of almost any and all tax plans. Uh, quotes Ayn Rand in economic presentation and has been a guest on libertarian talk show host Alex Jones' show, InfoWars. Alex Jones has been famous for ascribing and propagating conspiracy theories, like the Sandy Hook school shooting where mm. 20 young children and six adults were gunned down, right. uh, was staged and fake, right. uh, also as well as the infamous Pizzagate conspiracy theory. Mm. Do you believe this kind of association and the political views ex uh, expressed by Mr. Jacobs should cause Knox County residents concern. Does it reflect the view of the majority of Knox County residents? No, because Knox County residents, whether they know it or not, whether they want to admit, they do want the best things for their children and for themselves. I, I can't really speak for him. I've met the man several times. He's very nice, but his ideology is so far to the right and so extreme you know the idea that he wants to be head of the government he wants to be the mayor when he doesn't really believe in government I believe that government can is meant to take the resources of the public and make it work for them that's what government does it's not a business it's a service we're hired to do that mm -hmm. to take their resources and make everything work for them so I think that he I really just don't understand why people in that libertarian vent want to be mayors and things like that because they really don't believe in the government that they're coming into. So um, I do believe in it and I believe it can work and I believe that you can be responsible and make it progress, progress forward. Okay. Uh, being that Mr. Jacobs is a professional entertainer, a uh, professional wrestler, sure. no less, and associating with someone like Alex Jones, is it, queer to, is it fair to question whether he's in touch with the average Knox County resident? Well, of course it's fair to ask. I'm sure you, you know he can ask me that question too. Of course we can ask. He's an entertainer and that's great. I have nothing against that. You know, he's an entertainer and people enjoy watching him when he was a wrestler and all that. Uh, that's fine, but I do question his association with some of those people I, right. I, because there are some really far off people. The idea that Sandy Hook didn't happen and the idea that there's pizza, those are all nonsense. Right. That's just, and I think there's a small amount of people that believe that, but generally Knox County citizens don't believe those things. Okay. So, when the little bit of time that we have left, uh, what would you, is there anything that you would, uh, like to express to the voters uh, on what your cam campaign's about and why they should be supporting a Democratic candidate for the county mayor position that has gone to Republicans for, as you said, a, a, a long time now and represented by a single voice. Uh, what is it about your campaign that makes it viable now and why should people get behind you? Well, for a long, long time, there hasn't been another voice. And, the, and I am a Democrat. I am the Democratic candidate for Knox County Mayor. Democrats have ideas too. Hmm. Democrats can work with Republicans. In the past history, many times Republicans and Democrats have worked together. We bring our best ideas and we work together and we find a happy medium. We are not people, for many years, they say we're tax and spend. Well, for 25 years, I've watched no taxes and now we're at $600 million in debt. Mm. So what does that say? That says we're not tax and spend people, we're common sense people that want to move this, this county forward. I'm a citizen, I want it to be, progress. I want it to be a place that everybody wants to come to and everybody enjoys. So one of the things I didn't tell you about is I was a motorcyclist, my husband and I, and that's <laughs> one of the reasons we came back here to Knox County. That's great. So all motorcyclists need to know that this is a great place to be. Well, so. I agree with you there on that, but that's all the time we have for okay. today. Thank you, Linda. I'm thank Michael you. Davis, and thank you for watching DTV.